What's going on guys? t rec 87 here with mg 9 and today I want to talk to you about Bungie's weekly update and basically answer the questions, have they been listening to their community? We're going to go over it and we're going to talk about it. Let's get started. In Bungie's weekly update, um, they, they had canceled their live stream this week of uh, Curse of Osiris because of such the outcry um, and the outrage from the community. Um, not only over the fact that everyone's just getting tired of them just like not saying anything and not listening to the community about how you know we want the game to work, but also um, with the XP bar fiasco, I'm sure you already, you already heard about that, I kind of I glossed over it in a couple of my videos. Um, so I won't get into that part today, but what I did want to get into is Bungie's response and what they actually had to say to us and, and basically we're going to talk about, you know, were, have they been listening to the community? Uh, the big things from the community, from what I've heard, on the PV, uh, PvE side, it has been uh, purely, you know, what is the end game grind? You know, we you get to the end game. When you, Destiny Two is a great game, and you play through it, and then you get to the end of the game, and then there's not a whole lot to do once you collect a, a weapon like Better Devils or Uriel's Gift. You know, once you have that singular weapon, um, there's there's no more to chase after. You know, you don't need another one really, unless you want three for each character or something of that effect. But even at that point, after that, there's nothing to uh, to go after, and a lot of that is because. Um, with Destiny 2, they took away the randomized weapon rolls. With that being said, the, the static rolls were a good idea in a way. I mean, it made the game a little more, I think, casual friendly, and I think that's what Bungie has been going for, is to, you know, basically cast the widest net possible, get the, you know, get the most fish. And, but in doing so, they are starting to alienate their experienced player base, you know, people who played Destiny 1 who did not mind, you know, it may not have been the greatest grind in the world to have to try and grind, um, you know, for like Grasp of Malak 5,500 times to get that god roll, but at least it gave us an objective to shoot for, you know, and that's, I think what a lot of people, their feeling is, is you get to the end game, and there's there's no, there's no finish line, there's nothing to go towards, there's nothing to strive towards, and so that's been... For PV, uh, PvE, that has been, I think, the biggest thing um, that they want to see addressed is is the weapons and, and what are we going for. Um, you know, I have my own laundry list of complaints um, that I, I probably won't bring up a whole lot, but a lot of them fall in line with the communities. Others are just like my own personal um, preferences, I guess. So on the PvP side of things, though, the, the community has been clamoring forever about, you know, not only like ranked play, um, has been a big one, which I think everyone would love to see some sort of ranking system, you know, a la Overwatch or, or something to that effect, or the old Halo games. Um, something that would rank you globally, you know, a separate playlist um, that, you know, you could play to be ranked and see how you do, um, you know, at, at that point. And so I think that that's something that everybody's been very excited about. Uh, everybody has been kind of kind of cried about the the weapon system in Destiny 2, um, mainly how they you know they moved like shotguns and sniper rifles and everything into the uh, the heavy slot, and and now we have like two primaries and a and you know your heavy slots like this kind of mixed bag, and so that's something the community wants to go back to having like a primary, a secondary, and a heavy. Um, I don't know that that's ever going to happen, but that's been a huge focus other than rank play. Uh, you know I always see. Uh, everyone's saying we want 6v6 back. I would love to have 6v6 back personally. Uh, it brings a little more chaos to the maps, I think, and, and I, I think that it adds more fun to the you know the multiplayer side of things. Oh, people have also been wanting private matches um, and, and custom games, I guess I would say. Um, and so that's been another one, um, you know. And and these are maybe maybe not an all-encompassing list of community gripes. Obviously, I do not speak for the entire community of Destiny. Uh, but uh, these are the main things that I've noticed that everybody seems to want that, you know, is, is just a, a main encompassing thing. Um, and so basically, I just want, like I said, I want to go through this weekly update. We're going to kind of read through it a little bit and uh, and see what Bungie has to say. Are they going to be able to fix Destiny 2? Um, or, you know, is this game, you know, basically dead at this point? Is everybody just going to leave and find someone else to play? I will not bore everyone with the uh, Luke Smith intro. Um, it's very... It's just like, a, you know, saying like, hey, we hear you, blah, blah, blah. So, the first thing they want to talk about 
is and, and some of these updates will it will launch with curse of osiris and some of these will launch on december 12th the week after curse of osiris launches so i want to make that clear that this isn't all going to be in effect um that very first week but the the first thing they want to talk about is the new tier of weapons which are called masterworks which will feature stat trackers random re-rollable stat bonuses unique item tool tips and item detail screens so let me actually go down and show you guys really quickly what a masterwork weapon does. So this gives you, you know, more reload speed and, and gives you 10 damage to your weapon. Um, and I think this is not what everybody was hoping for, honestly. It, it does sound like a neat idea. I was kind of excited about it initially until I started looking at it. And uh, it, it really, what it really, somebody in the Destiny community forums um, posted this and I read it last night actually and, and it was a beautiful post because it was it was worded perfectly and he we the guy called uh, destiny a paper tiger is basically with all these stat bonuses and, and and all that and it's basically you know it's something that with with these uh the stat systems that destiny has um you know it, it's all it's all for show and for flash and it doesn't actually mean anything really as far as the pve side of things goes um because the thing about destiny and i know a lot of you anybody that plays this game knows is that a level one drag can be just as dangerous as a you know level 20 drag light level 260 drag whatever um to, to a point where like you know if if they're under leveled from you if you're like light 270 and they're 260 or down below they all do kind of the same amount of damage to you. They're all just as lethal, but by God, if they're a higher light level than you, watch out. And so that's something that Destiny, and this is something I've always known deep down, you know, with Destiny, is that um, it wasn't so much the stat bonuses were having, like, you know, more range, impact, any of that, blah, 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 or more power, you know, to a degree. Um, once you surpass the, the enemy's power level, it doesn't really seem to matter. I always knew that was kind of a fluff thing. It didn't really matter. Um, it did matter more for the PvP side of things, where, you know, obviously if you had, a, you know, the right set of perks on a weapon, you know, you could get a god roll weapon, and you could be very effective in the Crucible. So, and also they used to have, uh, for any of you that may have not played Destiny 1, which I doubt as many people, but, uh, they used to have light levels matter in the Crucible, so, you know, if I was light level 350 and somebody was light level 300, odds are I was going to win that engagement. And some people, I think, thought that was unfair, and they and Bungie didn't want that to, you know, turn off, like, newer players, I guess, probably, saying, like, hey, this guy's more powerful than me, why can't I beat him? But let me tell you, from a guy, come from a guy that used to love to Iron Banner, that was, like, my thing in the Crucible. I didn't really care for Crucible, but when Iron Banner came around, like, I was, like, rare and ready to go. And it was a lot of fun when somebody was higher up a light level than me, and I won an encounter with him. You know, if he was light level 400 and I was 390, you know, it's a good feeling to take down somebody that's 10 light levels ahead of you, and you still won. Um, so it did add an element of challenge to the Crucible, and it was a lot of fun. But as far as these stats goes, you know, they only, they don't matter, really. You know, as far as... You know, whether I'm fighting, if I'm light level 350, it doesn't matter if I if I gain 10 more light levels, I'm level 360 and the, and the drag is 340, or he's 310, or he's 300, or, you know, anything like that. If they're below you, it doesn't matter, but if they're higher than you, it does matter. And, but there's no real sense of, uh, you know, in a traditional RPG, you know, if you're level 1, you're going to suck, and you're going to have a hard time, you know, you're going to be evenly balanced with the level 1 enemy. But when you hit level 99, you should, like, wipe the floor with all these people, you know? And so that's something that has always not been a thing in Destiny, and it's a very broken mechanic, in my opinion. I think if you find a level 1 drag, you should be able to knock his socks off, personally. Um, so, again, this is, sorry, I, I know this is kind of a rant, but this is specifically, this is a cool idea. I, I, I will give them that. It is a cool idea. I like the idea of having a masterwork Uriel's gift. But... It's not what the community wanted. Again, this is the whole thing. Is Bungie's like, we hear you, we're listening, but guess what? They don't listen. They don't care. They want to. They want the game to be for casuals and and for you know they want to be able to get as many sales as possible. And that's and that seems like it's all they care for. And all this like masterwork weapon stuff that you're seeing down below, it's all just fluff. It's not anything really. Like cool, gives me. 10 more, uh, and, and some of you might say, well, well they can re-roll re the perks, but that's not actually like the perks intrinsic to the gun, really. I mean, like, I would rather have like a different scope or be able to have, you know, uh, per other actual weapon perks, not the, uh, 
not having a faster reload speed, that doesn't really matter to me, or like the, you know, the impact, and that could do a little more in certain situations, I guess. It would matter more, I guess, for PvP. Um, but again, it's not the way the community wanted it, and if Bungie would just listen to their community, they would have a great game. Um, so that's really unfortunate. I, I'm a little disappointed there. Um, I was super excited about it initially. Um, so, masterwork weapons, whoops. Uh, not not a great thing, uh, personally, from what I'm seeing. So they've got better incentives for, for prestige activities. Um, they don't really up in the. This is just like the bullet points. So they don't really. They're not really going into too much depth here. So we're going to go down below and and really take a look more as we go on. Uh, better rewards and re replay value for strikes, adventures, and lost sectors. You know, all they can really do at that point is give us more legendaries um, or or more tokens, I guess. Um, so. That's another thing is the like the strikes, adventures, and lost sectors are a good chunk of the game and they're fun, but there's no incentive to play them. So hopefully they can fix that. Um, private matches for the Crucible will come in early 2018. It looks like. Um, hopefully, hopefully they do do that. I personally could care less about about custom matches, but a lot of people want to play with their friends, and you know more power to them. I just you know I only have like. A couple friends so, <laughs> so I don't have that many people like if I want to go into a ranked crucible match it'd be like 1v1 and it wouldn't be that fun I guess um, moving ranked PvP to the top of our priority list for next year to support the competitive community thank God they're doing that I think that'll be so much fun when they do that and hopefully they do it right they do a good ranking system um, you know what I would like to personally see is I would like to see like a you know like a diamond platinum gold silver bronze wood tier you know or, or whatever you know i'm just kind of pulling like random elements out of nowhere but i would like to see like a ranked system where you know like where say you're an average run-of-the-mill destiny player like you would fit into like you know like the silver tier which is like you know the middle of all the tiers and then you would fight people in that tier to try to move up and progress into the gold tier and maybe they'll do something with like seasons um, but, you know, like much like uh, I think like Overwatch tends to do something like that. I never really have played Overwatch, but I've heard a lot of great things about it. I've tried it, and I, I hated it. Uh, I just couldn't get into it. But I, I do have a lot of respect for Overwatch just for the fact that the competitive community uh, seems to absolutely love it, and I can totally respect that. So thank goodness for that. Uh, Cruise platooning. Uh, nobody really cares about supremacy. I don't think. Better incentives for completing crucible matches and penalties for quitting competitive games. So I also like this. So I hoping like a quitter penalty, especially when they do bring ranked matches around. Um, I hope it's a pretty harsh penalty if you keep quitting, so that way it doesn't affect your ratio. Um, I hope you know after like your tenth like you know rage quit, you can just get like knocked down into like the bronze tier, or something like something to that effect, you know, or. or I don't know, maybe you get put into a special pool full of quitters and you guys can all just quit games together. Uh, something like that I think would be perfect. <laughs> would be another, like a, a great way to do that. Uh, continued improvements to Iron Banner and Faction Rallies, including uniqueness of rewards. Um, this really, I mean, it's not even the uniqueness of the rewards there, there Bungie. It's, it's the fact that the token system blows. It sucks so bad. Uh, the token system is so broken, it's not any fun to use. And so I know they've promised us more on this, and they promised to revamp the economy, so I will give them, you know, once again, the benefit of the doubt, like I always do, and hopefully they'll fix it. But right now, the token system sucks. You know, I didn't even play last Iron Banner, because, and all I needed was legs, but I knew my odds of getting those legs were pretty infinitesimally small. Some people get lucky, and they get, like, a whole set of armor. Some people don't. Some people get, like, the arms 65 times, like me. And so I didn't even want to play the last Iron Banner. And like I said earlier, like I'm a huge Iron Banner fan, you know, like Iron Banner was like my jam in Destiny 1. And and it was because it was something that was competitive and it was fun and unique. And I'm not good enough to play in Trials really, like Trials of Osiris or Trials of the Dying. And so that was like my, my compromise was Iron Banner. Um, <coughs> Trials, of the, Trials of the Nine, Trials of Osiris, there was too few people. I thrive on the chaos when it's 66 and that's something I miss about the Crucible is that I do better when there's more people. I feel like there's less uh, chance of me getting noticed and getting shot, and that's really where I excel, is coming up from behind you and like bludgeoning you, I guess, is, is really where, <laughs> where my skill comes in. Um, so, changes to the mod economy, uh, Gunsmith will have some updates, I don't really care about the Gunsmith, nobody does. Um, I mean, the mods are cool, and they need, they need to make the mods more unique, and this could be 
um, the saving grace uh, for not having random weapon rolls is is having more unique and rare mods. I know this is kind of like with the masterwork weapons thing. Um, this could be a really cool thing. Um, if you guys have never watched Fireteam Chat on IGN, uh, CJ Gibson has been like talking about this for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks about how the, if they did the mods right, it could totally solve their problem. And I totally agree with him. And if you guys have not ever seen Fireteam Chat, um, it's just IGN's Destiny show. And if you're a huge Destiny fan, you should really check it out. You know, everybody calls IGN, um, you know, Destiny or Bungie apologists. And, and they're really not, you know, like I, I would say most of them try to take an optimistic view of the game because they all love the game, like much of us do. But I, I don't know that they're necessarily apologists. You know, when Bungie does deserve to get grilled for something, they definitely don't hold back, I think, sometimes. Um, you know, whereas I think out of, the, out of the group, Fran, who is my personal favorite, is probably um, least likely to say anything negative, and I just think it's his personality more than anything. I think I watched the guy on Twitch, and I think he just generally is not a negative person. He doesn't like to speak ill of things in general. Um, and so he, he gets flack for that a lot. But like I said, you guys should check out Fireteam Channel on IGN if, you, if you've never seen it. Um, it's a really good show. There's just four dudes talking about Destiny, and it's, it's a lot of fun to watch every week. Um, so I do recommend that. Um, ongoing improvements to exotics, including adjustments to reduce instances of duplication. Thank God. Um, because if I ever get another Doomfang pauldron, I will scream. Um, so that is just a, something they need to fix, you know? And, and that's something that where now, though, the problem is going to be if I don't get duplicate exotics, I'm going to get out, get my exotics, and I'm going to max out all my exotics. And I think they're working on something like this with like the legendaries and everything too, to where we're not going to get so many duplicates, but then you're going to have all the guns, and then we're not going to have anything to chase again. And this goes back into having static weapon rolls and how it's not um, not working. And they need to do something with like the mod economy or, or something to, to fix that. Um, and everybody thinks that random weapon rolls would be a good thing. I totally agree. Um, well, I think sometimes, you know, it sucked and, and I'll, I'll get off this topic, I promise, but it sucks, you know, getting shot at in the crucible by a dude who had like a god roll, um, you know, a god roll weapon, a god roll pulse rifle or whatever. And, and you don't get that roll and you're just like, God, how, I be, how do I be competitive at that point? Um, it, it's something, but like I said, it gives you something to chase towards. And so when, when you do get that weapon, it's, it's very gratifying. Um, so there is kind of like a, a plus and minus there, but I think it's better than what we're seeing right now, which is all negatives. Um, so we'll have that. New ways to spend surplus currency materials, looking at you, legendary shards. Um, so just more ways to spend our money. Um, our tokens, our legendary shards, they better do something. Zerl has new items, it looks like. And of course, you know, everybody's most requested, uh, thing about Destiny ever, uh, an emo interface that allows players to equip salty, spicy almond, sex shooter, and flip out all at the same time. So just an emo wheel, which literally nobody fucking requested. I, I swear to God, nobody requested this. Um, and, and while I thought it would be neat to be able to do more than, you know, different emotes, uh, really, literally, I don't even care. Um, so I already talked about the masterworks. Um, the ornamentation I am stoked about. I love being able to cut my armors. I hope they have, I hope they really get into this and they have like multiple ornament ornaments for multiple armor sets or ornaments that can go onto different armors or something like that. I hope it's not just like, oh, you have your iron banner shoulders and now you have the shoulder ornament and that's it. Um, I would love to see them really flesh this out and have like a ton of different ornaments and you have like different styles and it doesn't have to just be like weird neon ornaments. It can totally change the look of the armor. I think this would be so cool and this would, I'm a total, you know, excuse the language, but I'm a total cosmetics whore and if they could really allow me to deep dive and customize my character and make it look unique from everybody else's guardian, that would be awesome. I would love that and that would actually, that alone would get me back into Destiny a lot. So armor ornaments be added to some existing armor sets for more visual customization without losing your shaders and rods. These ornaments will be unlocked by completing objectives specific to each set. That's cool. And are permanently unlocked account wide. That's actually also cool. Just like exotic weapon ornaments. So right on. They'll be applied to base pieces that you may already have collected and now unlocked on vendors. If not in season two, the following sets of ornaments unlocked in their respective activities. Don't really want to go through all that. 
Um, let's see here. So par also part of the December 12th update, faction armor and weapons will be unlocked for purchases for using uh, legendary shards and faction tokens on most faction vendors. All five armor slots will always be present and weapons will rotate weekly on factions that have them. Slots will be unlocked by claiming reward engrams for the respective faction. You'll get credit for engrams you may have already claimed since launch. That's cool. I I'm glad I'm going to be able to like purchase uh, things again. Uh, that actually solves a large part of my complaint um, about uh, having to like just like roll for stuff and drive myself nuts for turning in like thousands of tokens and never ever getting what I want. Um, so rock on Bungie, thank you for doing that. I think that's really cool. So that is that is some good news right there. Now, if they would just bring back like uh, armor perks, we'd be we'd be set, um, which they really need to think about doing because. Having all these different armor sets sucks, and it doesn't mean anything if they don't if they don't do anything special, you know. And so that is my letdown right now is is the armor it doesn't do anything special for you. So like, what's my incentive to go get the raid gear? Like, I look neat, and like I said, I'm a cosmetics whore, but I'm not a six hour grind cosmetics whore. Um, so that's kind of tough for me to a tough pill to swallow. But if the raid armor had certain perks to it, like the old raid armor did in Destiny One, yeah, I'd go sign up, you know. And then I'd and I'd get like the double bonus of neat armor and having cool perks. Um, so, and here is Zer having his new items, a faded engram, which will decode into an engram that is something that is likely to not be something that you already have. Um, so that's kind of cool. It will let you um, go and get, you know, and I, I can already see what's going to happen though. If it, if it only costs 97 legendary shards, there are people out there that have thousands. And as soon as Zer, Zer rolls around the first time, uh, first time uh, Osiris drops, um, Everybody's going to have every exotic possible. They're just going to go out there and boom, 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 and just blow all their legendary shards and Zer, and you're going to have every exotic, and that's cool, um, but it's going to take away the uh, the grind game a little bit. Um, he's also going to have three coins, which is cool to let us, you know, be able to get more engrams. Um, now let's see here. Here is one I am curious about. Um, Banshee 44 and the gunsmith. Let's see the or the you know Banshee 44 is the gunsmith. For players wanting to clear some mod inventory space, rare quality mods will dismantle into the gunsmith materials and have a chance to produce legendary quality mod components. Uh, for players chasing specific legendary mods, including legendary kinetic mods, Banshee will offer a selection of specific legendary mods for the direct purchase, with the selection that will rotate daily and cost legendary shards and mod components. Eh. So it just looks like you're gonna have a, more ways to get the mods you want, which is which is cool. Um, I I can go for that. I I wish they would expand the mod system more though, and just add something like like I'm not a game designer, so I don't know what that is, what they need to add, but I wish they would add to it. Um, Commander Zavala and Lord Jax will sell sell gift consumables for legendary shards that can be used during a strike or crucible matches that will serve the following functions: grant bonus rewards to everyone in the activity. Oh, that's neat, friend or foe alike. And so, like, you can everybody can buy these consumables and then you know, like, play crucible or something like that. And then we all, you know, you have stand a, everybody stands a higher chance of getting something. So that's kind of cool. Um, award anything from faction tokens to a round of exotics for everyone in the match. Okay, well, I can get on board with that. That's that's neat. I like that. Um, and that, again, is something for, for us to spend our, our legendary shards on. December 12th update. Exploit safeguards on chests and resource nodes are generally are great rela relax, and players should encounter them less frequently. Even if they do, drop rates for tokens is only reduced to 30% instead of 0%, and Glimmer will be unaffected. We want to associate a visual indicator with this in the future update, but we weren't able to pull that off in this update, but we hear you. Um... Cool, I guess. I mean, that doesn't really mean a whole lot to me. I mean, exploit safeguards on chests and resource nodes are great to really relax. Um, does that mean we're all going to be able to, like, cheese the faction rallies like we already have been and make it worse? Uh, so, to me, that was a little confusing. I'm not really sure about that. If any of you, like, do know the purpose behind that, um, let me know in the comments below because I don't really understand, like, what they're going for there. Um, it kind of is a little confusing to me, like why that even matters. So yeah, again, if you guys know in the comments, um, sound off below and let me know, uh, cause I would love to know. Vendors will now beckon you to hand in your reputation tokens. Sweet. Don't care. Uh, changing, changes affecting reputation tokens. Daily challenges will have reputation tokens. Awards increase across the board. Cage treasure tests that still offer variable rewards, but now guarantee at minimum a payout of destination appropriate reputation tokens. Woohoo! Uh, considering his, you know, chest costs like half your glimmer if you buy them all every week. Um, I don't really care about K chests. I wish they would have something cool in them. 
something unique. If we're going to do these, make them super hard to find and, and hide them super, super cool and hard to get to. Um, and maybe put like a little mini boss in front of the chest and then get something cool. Some Cade themed thing, you know, like have like Cade themed gear in the game. Do something neat with it. Quit giving me tokens for something like that. Like, you know, like that's something that really pisses me off. I, I really, I was excited about the Cade chest and I wanted to see what was in them. And then it's just, it's, it's all garbage and it's not worth your time. Um, like it's never been worth my time. I've gotten like a... I got like an emblem one time and that was it and I just like I can't I hate it so um, on the balance reputation required per reward and gram will increase for destination factions mm, cool Leviathan raid tokens will be doable at Benedict immediately upon obtaining a token instead of requiring a full clear before unlocking um, I've yet to do the raid so again that doesn't really matter to me here they're talking about the XP mechanics and they're saying that you know they're gonna work on this and, and um, try not to be shysters in the future um, and they're saying, and here's the ending here, future going forward, we plan to continue the, this dialogue as openly, as frequently as possible. And this is something that, you know, honestly, at this point, when Bungie says stuff like this, like, I, I don't even believe them anymore because they're totally shysty about it. They, they have been saying this to us for like three years. Like, we're going to keep having this conversation, Guardian, or, uh, which is my Deej impression, by the way, um, or, um, you know we're gonna we're gonna be open and honest with you guys and, and it's always like it's always total crap like they never are really um this is stuff that you know it's a week away and they're showing us this because they've got it all nailed down and you know bungie would come to the community and say like hey community this is what we want to do what do you guys think and this is you know not going to be soon this is going to be a year down the road this is like our ultimate end game what we want to do to the game or six months down the road and then what they need to do at that point is um, is start playtest servers. And you don't necessarily need to re to launch the expansion content early or anything like that, but have like a test server with like a set environment. Just make a small ish environment that players can go and test these mechanics, and you know, and just have it like be like a tiny chunk of the Destiny world, but in a, in a controlled test environment, and then people can like sign up to to play test it because you guys don't really know how this thing is going to go when you've only got like a thousand people playtesting you need to have like you know hundreds of thousands um and so if bungie would just make public test servers and maybe make them like isolated test servers of the game where they're not like giving away content you know i can understand why they don't want to because they don't want everybody to experience like the expansion before it's out but give us a chance to try it and give you candid feedback and then we would actually be a community as you always say and then this would be fixed you know, and so it's just one of those things that it, it pisses me off about Bungie. They, they say they try, and then you know they they, they just don't do a good job with it, and and they're not open and honest with us, um, like they say they're going to be. So it, it is very frustrating, and I can understand everybody's frustration with that. With that being said, I will be buying uh, Curse of Osiris um, for review purposes, and because I do still love Destiny, even though I don't really play it anymore. Um, I am definitely going to buy it. I'm going to try it out. Um, so there will be a review. I, the day it comes out, I have the day off. And so I imagine I will likely um, just be playing it like crazy, just trying to explore all the mechanics of the game and see what I think of it. So look forward to that, you guys. And with that being said, I don't think I've taken a breath this entire video. Um, thank you so much guys for watching and I really appreciate your time. Um, if you guys did like the video, go ahead and drop a like down below. And if you guys have anything to say about as far as like Bungie's weekly update or anything like that, um, leave a comment below because I definitely like to continue this conversation um, as far as uh, Destiny goes. It's one of my favorite games. Um, it is a passion of mine. And if this is your first time to the channel, uh, please hit that subscribe button. That way you can always come back for more content anytime myself or TieFly85 post content. Um, he tends to do movie news and reviews and stuff like that. And I tend to talk about video games just so you're aware. Um, but hit that subscribe button, little bell notification on, and you'll get notified whenever we do post something new. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I know this was a long video, but I do appreciate you watching, and I will see you again soon.